cobblestone to sprout, but they left it in. There must be a reason that they did. Um, you it can was tell Mirage. yourself that, James. <laughs> it, was, it was Mirage and Cobblestone that were left in the pile by Space Soldiers, and Cloud9 had the opportunity to pick Cobblestone. So yes, I think Cloud9 are probably a favourite, but I think that I think that T Tarek is, uh, you know, he, he's a he's a Turkish boy, so. I think he's been paid off that. Let's see how it works out for them. Skadoodle gets off to a good start with the first pick onto Major, but the numbers game will be too much for Automatic in the danger position. Yeah, you need to have that good start on the T side here from Space Soldiers. They, they need to make sure they have minimal rounds where Skadoodle has an AWP. They've got to keep that to a minimum because that will be scary. And this is this this is a map where I do feel indeed that Cloud9 have a very big edge. So Space Soldiers will need all the advantages they can get. Now this is quite a cold start because, as we can see from the spread of Cloud9, they have no idea what's going on. They're playing two on either side, so this works out kind of well as a reset, where Space Soldiers cut the noise, they rotate together, should have a 4v2. Tarek, though, great position, should be able to get one kill, surely. Ooh, before they close the distance, needs to get something out of this. Oh, can't quite find the headshot that he needs, and now they're all on top of him. This is very problematic, though, the crossfire is working out, and suddenly Tarek gets the kills, gets the damage, and his teammates come in for the assist, and that looks pretty clean, but that was scary for a moment there. Much needed around on the CT side. Pistol, very, very important indeed. And there is the man, Skadoodle, or Scar, as the Bromies call him. Opening frag for him. Tarek it was difficult for him. And uh, funny enough, staying alive helped by time because if that push had come faster from Space Soldiers, Stewie was kind of stuck between the plateau and the drop position. And there weren't enough CTs to really help the defense. So the, the slow push from Space Soldiers ended up helping Cloud9 in that situation. Force spy from the Space Soldiers side. And they've got grenades going towards B, it seems. Yeah, I wonder if it, in a do-over they would have just gone for drop, but it is time to move forwards, onwards. We've got some smokes coming there from Space Soldiers from T-Spawn. Love to see that. Let's see how well Stewie can do in the defense of the plateau. When will Space Soldiers go? What's the magic number? Is that the magic number? Is, uh, what is it, Dan? Come on. I don't know. I was, that. <laughs> I was, I was hoping that when we switched them, they pick would a number. Uh, well, five. Fifth, one five. fifteen, apparently. Five. Any five. One fifteen. Go on any five. Crossfire between Stewie and Tarek. Both blind though, and Stewie doesn't see anything. Stewie gets executed. Cold blood. Tarek. The whole space soldier team just got flashed, but there's only one kill for the CT side so far. Paz is the man who's down. Calix will take Tarek out by the statue position. Space soldiers will hug the statue as they plant the bomb. Four versus two, make it three. Automatic looking to cut these players down along with Rush. Leading the charge is Rush with Automatic by the tree in case. There's a flank from these T's. Still on pistols apart from Major on the UMP. Time is ticking. Zantares looking for the meat shots. Looking to take these players to the butchers, but they haven't been tagged just yet. Cloud9 biding their time, but there goes Automatic. Now it's Rush 1 versus 3, trying to use what little cover he has around that boulder. Maybe he wants to save his M4, I don't know, but there's one duel done. And Zantares will finish him off with the Deagle. Space Soldiers win the force. That was really nice from Kalex. The second frag here, I thought it was pretty bold for him to go for this, but he absolutely nails it. And that was what made the difference to get them on the site, get the plant and hold on to the post-plant scenario for the close. Really, really good stuff there from them. But they themselves have to now defeat the Force by in return from Cloud9, who will fight fire with fire in the form of CZs and Deagles. Not really all that much in the way of utility, but such is the nature of Cloud9's position. Now, the question really here is how well routine Space Soldiers are in minimizing the ability for the Force by to do anything. And they have utility, a lot of utility, for that very purpose. But Tarek, oh, if he could find like a very good timing here and get a pick early. Is that really? Oh, there it is! Nice headshot there from Tarek. Nice. And that makes things complicated now. That might change Space Soldiers want to go into B. There's a minute 20 for Space Soldiers to recover from the shock of their fallen comrade to dispose of any weapon he may have been carrying and to put the best step forward. Engine looking towards the A area. He's got a Mac 10. He can go for the information, but he can't get too Larry as they are already a man down. Automatic Skadoodle and Stewie around the A site. Nobody peaking plateau for Cloud9 at the moment, but they'll still invest most of their players towards A. I think they're going to go for a boost Cloud9 in the in the drop. Rush and Tarek are in there. Or maybe they'll just be content with this position. 45 seconds left, and Space Soldiers have been quiet for a while. 
Automatic falling back to a second. Angled is fairly predictable. Kalex spots it out, gets the kill, but the damage is pretty huge on the two players of Space Soldiers, Kalex and Zantaras. As Zantaras, as they'll now try to get to the planting position. Stewie just barely missing the headshot he needed there, and they will be deflected. These CT players of Cloud9 and three will survive for Space Soldiers. A very tense round. It could have gone wrong in, the, in about 500 different ways, but they managed to survive, and it all started with that beautiful shot there from Tarek. And now Cloud9 have to go for the full save, unfortunately for them. But uh, Yeah, it was fire versus fire, but now it's jet lighters versus matches in the wind, Dan. Cloud9 do not have much to offer in this round, but Tarek's brought to Taser. <laughs> I guess he's going to drop then. Yeah, let's have a look. I would love to see Tarek's perspective, see what he's up to with this Taser. Tarek's the man to watch here. What is the play, Monsieur Tariq? Ooh, the, cr the close broken wall would be a nice one. Here he comes, he's completely blind. He's holding on to it, but Kalex will ruin all our suspense. I was hyped for that one, Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, the funny thing is you, you do wonder what would have happened is Skidoo didn't get the rocking at the double doors. Because Skidoo was actually blocking for a good couple of seconds. I'm at the double doors. Can't believe he's done this. Yeah, he, he probably ruined, ruined that with the block. I don't know if anyone else noticed that, but but I did. I saw it. Somehow two players have been lost here for Space Soldiers. The bomb has been planted. The most Cloud9 have clawed back is a Mac 10 There's a money make Charge. exercise there. I don't know if the AWP still fires electricity if you mess around with a taser beforehand, because that was a bug in the game at some point. It did look amazing. Yeah, it was then cool. People were doing it with the like what AWP was it? lightning. Yes, exactly. The yes. Skins. Yeah, that was pretty nice. I have uh, a hollow dignitas sticker on my AWP. The one with the eyes. They recently uh, released uh, the Mandem from their contracts <laughs> on the dignitas team. Still have the female team. They're free. Well, Space Soldiers, it seems, will be the ones to get off to a good start. Three to one after breaking Cloud9 in round number two. And now we're on that round number five. All M4s for Cloud9. No sniper rifle for Skadoodle just yet. All right, so this is where things get interesting then. As you say, no sniper for Skadoodle to really fight with. So it just comes down to using these rifles and setups very well. And they don't have as many nades as Space Soldiers. So space Soldiers can play a really slow round, try to pressure away that much utility, and then go for a set piece. That's you know, one way you could approach this. We'll see if they can get anybody into forward positions to just sort of make plays. But it does not look like they're interested in that. They're just going to go for a set piece onto the B bomb site and try their luck. Cutline still have some good counter grenades to be used. So we see the flashes thrown into the sky. Interesting wall of smoke. Even the tree position is covered. Tarek, though, that will give him some extra space to play with. Two man spray down for Tarek. And there's only one pick for Space Soldiers. The execute works in reverse because they're the ones who are down. Only one play lost for Cloud9. That is a great round from them. A great round indeed. Cloud9 never shy to play against a smoke execute from a T side. And they're bundled up, almost blocking each other there, making it easy for Tarek to spread the wealth. And that's like a really good counterplay as well, because obviously in these set pieces, you see the Molotov on top of the tree position where Tarek was, but he had the, the forward smoke, which makes it really hard I to could, then do anything against him. I guess that maybe there was a Molotov there and he threw a smoke down yes, himself. I believe he did. Yeah. And so, so that's a really nice counterplay. It just, it just broke everything. And I think, you know, Space Soldiers at the very least, I think they would have been okay with losing that round. I mean, the Cloud economy is not great. But getting a bomb plant would have been a, a must. Getting a few frags would have been a must. They achieved neither. Yeah, one player is not enough in that situation for a T side. See what Space Soldiers can do now. Paz will be looking for a flank, but not much more towards B, which may suggest a fast play towards A. Tarek and Stewie are starting to get hungry for information towards the plateau. They've gone for the deep smoke. You see. This is, uh, they've completely secured this area, which means that one person is going to rotate towards A. Rush is making his way towards A, and Stewie may take Rush's position, perhaps, around the connector. We'll wait and see. The minute mark is reached, and look at the aggression from Cloud9 in their positions towards A because of their information towards B. This could be pretty huge, an explosive contact play. Will they be ready for this Cloud9 nades in hands? Automatic spots ahead, and he will take it down. 
Will they be able to get any trade frags here? The positioning from Cloud9 is pretty interesting at the moment. Skadoodle not in the best spot to deal with that. Sort of being sold out a little bit, and it's not going to work out here for Cloud9. Stewie by the APC looking to try to hold on to this bomb site. It's Molotov out of position, but he can reposition there to help his teammate out. Stewie by the APC forced into the open. And these opening battles are so far going the way of Space Soldiers. 2v1, and the trade is there by Engine. Just about so close. It's pretty crazy that Space Soldiers got anywhere near that far, or c considering the information Cloud9 had. There was no presence shown by Space Soldiers, I think, at all in that entire round towards the B bomb site. C uh, Cloud9 had a stranglehold on the plateau, had the extra man over towards the A site, but still they don't manage to win it. I think, um, I mean, may maybe the key thing there was, I want to say they had two rounds connector. I wasn't paying attention later on in the round, but. I don't know if they made the right read and weren't willing to uh, to make the full investment or were afraid of a late split, but there we go. Space Soldiers with, uh, what I have to say, it's an unexpected victory in that round. They've broken Cloud9 once again after a good pistol round. This half has so far turned into disaster for the North Americans. Absolutely. Ooh, Calyx, nice there. <laughs> Taking down everyone with the Mag-10, making that money. Accidentally kills his teammate. Oh, okay, I'll upgrade to your AK. Accidentally. <laughs> Uh, it's all an accident, I'm sure. Major now to try to cover, and it's not really is that going. another team kill? I, yeah, it is. It's not really going so well, too well, is it, for Space Soldiers? Two team kills. Oh no, they're going to line up. Automatic can do this. Oh god, Engine to save the day again. That's not a round in which they should lose four players. Never. Friendly fire! Friendly fire! What kind of soldiers are these? <laughs> 5-2, and there isn't money for a sniper unless somebody wants to play naked. Tarek opting for a scout. Interested to see how this goes. Two team kills in one round. I'd love to see how often that's happened at a major. Yeah. Yeah, that's... That, I, that's they can't be more than, than, like, what you could count on one hand, right? I mean, never see that kind of a situation. It's pretty nuts. But it shouldn't really amount to much. At least, again, you don't lose $3,300 like you used to for a team kill. That was a bit draconian. But Cloud9 back with a buy. Again, we don't see Skadoodle with an AWP. They, they are keeping the money out of the hands of Cloud9 to prevent that. And also Tarek's on a scout. And Paz already with a quick pick towards mid. Was that through the... Oh, I think it was. Beautiful there. And also the door. So really good start here for Space Soldiers against the ill-equipped Cloud9. Speaking of ill-equipped, Major knows that players are lacking helmets. He's got his Mac 10 and he wants to get his spray game going. Minute 10, and Space Soldiers quietly creep again. Uh, Tarek has an angle towards B Plateau, but there's time for Space Soldiers to go back and forth, so the full investment isn't there from Cloud9. Again, they've got two players around the connector, and it's a site which are essentially uh, weakly defended. Skidoodle goes down on his own as, as Dewey makes his way off the balcony. Rush has got to commit to this as well. He's got to join his teammate. It's a late rotation from the CT. There's a big opportunity for Space Soldiers to isolate these players. Balcony position now taken by Rush. Look at the Molotovs. Look at the details. Stewie's on fire. Stewie is no longer alive, and Tarek is left alone with the scout. Another round lost by Cloud9. Maybe a surprising start for Space Soldiers. Yes, yeah, perfectly, hasn't it? I thought that maybe rushing into that B set piece on Cloud9's first buy round, I thought that, you know, okay, maybe that's, you know, where things go wrong. You know, it was a clean hold. Really nice, you know, stuff there. We saw Tarek on the tree position, you know, using the, uh, using the Molotov against his opponents by smoking it and using it, that smoke to get an easy spray down. And I thought Cloud9 would start to go from strength to strength, but Space Soldiers, they realize, okay, we need to play some more defaults. We can need to play more together, just rushing in. There's, two, there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you do a B rush. I think to a lot of people, they would, you know, it's not a consistent approach to your T side. It's something you want to throw in every so often, but it's not really a good go-to. And I'm glad that we're seeing from Space Soldiers more from their repertoire. What's interesting for me to watch on Cloud9's uh, CT half at the moment is where they're positioned when they're trying to identify what's going on. Like once they have plateau control, depending on the time as well, what they choose to do with that information, because we haven't seen so far, I, I want to say we haven't seen them have plateau control mid round and have space soldiers come out of plat in any of these rounds. So at that point, if Cloud9 keep more people for a rotation around the connector position or in the A site, Curious to watch, but for now, it will be pistols for the most part. Tarek still has his scout. The loss bonus is rising for Cloud9, but maybe the water is as well. 
It's a nice initial pick from Zantares, getting warm. Getting the blood in those hands. And he's just gonna just wreck absolutely everybody. Four quick kills from Zantares. Now will the fifth be offered up to him for a cheeky eco ace? So it is Tarek with the Kevlon and the Scouts. And he may want to try to save these. Oh man, it's not gone well for Cloud9, has it? It's a scary prospect. For those of you in GoTV, it's very easy pick to pick Zantares, but I think because he is the star of Space Soldiers, Kalix doesn't get as much his attention as he otherwise might. So for me, the uh, the GoTV, GoTV pick for this game is going to be Kalix. I'm interested to see what he has to offer for Space Soldiers. And there is Tarek taking Zantares down. He was low. Now Tarek is surrounded. He's got to find a headshot. He's aiming high. He was close, but not close enough, unfortunately. Seven to two, worst hand in poker. <laughs> 7-2 offsuits. Yes. Oh, dear. For Cloud9, it is It's finally, finally, it's round 10, James, and we see an AWP in the hands of Skadoodle. Skadonglas. It took a while, but he's there. The question Scott now is Daddy. whether he gets to use it. Because if we get that spot where... It feels like so classic sometimes when you're in this position, in his in his spot, where it's like, oh, finally, I've got the orb, and then they rush the other side, and then you can't do anything, and you, the round is lost. I hope that doesn't happen for him. He will start long A. Skadoodle. Rifle support will be in automatic. Always a good person to watch on the CT side as well. And uh, we have Space Soldiers with a focus on B for the time being. Smoke on Plateau. Nobody close to Plateau for Cloud9. They're playing close to kind of between the tree and connector position. They can put two in, uh, in the drop pretty quickly if they want to. And there is Tarek joining Rush to re-smoke the position. Paz is starting to creep around that smoke on the plateau. And we can know that the grenades are starting to really dwindle here now for Cloud9 as Paz gets a fairly poor position on the plateau with also Major, with the, uh, who is next to him for the assists and also the grenades. I think that is, is that for the tree position? I think it very well might be. Very important to make sure you get monitors on that position. Again, there's no smokes at this point for Tarek to smoke it as he did previously. Ooh, Skadoodle getting a kill on that region on the other side of the map. Good start there for Cloud9. Three players left now for Space Soldiers. They have to go for this. And they've already lost Xantaris as well, the heavy hitter of the team. But Mage is there to step up to the plate. Now the split comes in full force. Drop and plateau. What can they do with it? They have to hit every shot. Kalix goes down leaving Paz and Major with it all to do, but they've managed to do a very good job here. Now it's on Scar. How have they got this far? Skadoodle has an opportunity to walk through the smoke and he will do exactly that. Surely catches somebody by surprise, but he doesn't know which way to look. The bomb gets planted after time. Major, someone has to get a 2K there and uh, Major did a very good job. How did they manage to pull that one off? I, I am so, so shocked. Yeah, three versus five. There's the second kill from Major. Picks off Skadoodle as well. We were looking for a player to deliver multiple kills. And the man with the golden hair is the one to do it. Eight to two. Cloud9 have no answer for the soldiers in space. It's uh, it's funny, you know, you mentioned how underlooked uh, Kalix can be, but, you know, Paz, you know, he had some incredible performances as well at the challenger stage. So another man to look out for on the team. It's, it's, a, it's a very deep team as far as the skill is concerned. And we're only finding that out, um, you know, well, for, well, rather, we are finding that out more and more as we see them go deeper and deeper in these tournaments. Tarek with a nice catch onto Major. Doesn't, of course, you know, kill him, but down to 12 health. Major's going to feel fairly useless at this point. And he was sort of the lurker as well in this play. So having him be this low before he's taken drop, that's actually fairly significant. Only pistols for Cloud9, though. They're starting to gravitate towards the A site. Four players now making their way there. And uh, maybe three soldiers are at a point of no return. Engine taking some damage and Kalix has been picked off. And down go to CTs as well. Can they collect any weapons? Stewie and Rush remain. No, uh, no scout left to finish off these players. Got to be the pistols. There's a nice angle for Rush and Stewie's in a tough spot there because he's exposed to two places. Engine gets taken down and now it's down to Paz. Full health. He knows where these two players are roughly. I don't know if any of them can collect anything better, but maybe what they have is enough. Paz going towards the balcony position. He's got 30 seconds to play with. He knows 
Rush was under the balcony. He knows Stewie's on the sides. Can he get the one versus one, though? Stewie's positioning has to be awkward here. He's waiting for it. There's a first kill. Rush at 4 HP. The spray. Can he find a position? Rush jumping around the corner. Paz hunting after him. Rush just playing cat and mouse. And Paz just about makes it. Steadies the ship in rough waters. And the charge continues. Oh, my God. That was close. Wow. 9 to 2. This was so close. Paz, 59 health after that first engagement. Tries to go for the pursuit. Oh, it's so darn close. My, my. 9-2. They lost uh, a fair amount of money there, so the, 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 they haven't lost enough money. I mean, they still have a good couple buys if they start losing rounds here. So Cloud9 are in a ridiculously tough position. They've gone for the double orb here. Stewie's picked one up as well. So hopefully for Cloud9's sake, that can make the difference for them because right now, Space Soldiers are really performing individually very, very well in a lot of these rounds. And here is the flashbang to force automatic off the angle. He's got the smoke ready for that. And again, this is what a good pressure is about. It's, it's about you know, pushing the CTs around, forcing them to use this utility. This is uh, very important to have in your basics in Counter-Strike as a team. Major on alert once again. He's got his flashes. So Stewie may have a problem in holding his angle later on. Around the statue of the AWP, one of two for Cloud9 in this round. Smartly bouncing a smoke grenade off the wall. That's one to learn at home. Not exposing yourself to the position. Landing perfectly for him. And that's a strong position for the next 15 seconds or so. Space Soldiers now after showing a lot of presence towards the A bomb site, Leaving two players there, but a bomb is rotating towards B. Oh, wow. What a pick onto automatic. That is so dirty there from Xantaris and from Paz. And with Tarek just standing very nearby, perhaps suspecting maybe something, but helpless to do anything without a flashbang. At least Xantaris will go down to Skadoodle, who's on the bomb site. But what do they read from this? Well, they, there is a bomb, so that's all the information that they need. Cloud9 in a very good position. 15 seconds to go. Major can frag as much as he wants, but the bomb is still with Tarek. Yeah, but now they need to make it expensive. Space soldiers need to make this as costly as possible. Their money's not spectacular, but I think they may be missing a trick here. They're both holding on to their weapons, but if they're looking to reset Cloud9 in the next round, I think three people surviving for C9 is not the most ideal situation. And I think that the, the priority there is surely the economy of Cloud9. But there we are, three, two, nine. It's a pretty good half so far for Space Soldiers, but there is a road to recovery for Cloud9. They've still got the AWP onto Skadoodle, four M4s, so there won't be two sniper rifles this time, but maybe one is enough. Right, so this is this is the big round. The repercussions aren't, I mean, let's not consider them just yet. It would be very, very hard for Cloud9 should things go awry here, so. Space Soldiers, are they going to change things up? We've got more presence towards the plateau so far. They are, they have engine, I think, lining up a smoke there towards, uh, from T-Spawn again. Zantara is making sound cues towards the drop position. Oh, he's got the pick onto Rush as well. That's big. Oh, my God, a second one from Zantara's. Five versus three, and they haven't even gone for the execution onto the B site yet. This opens up a lot of opportunities for Space Soldiers. They don't even have to continue committing to B. They have over a minute to play with. This is beyond ideal for them. Had to wait for the smokes to disappear on the plateau, but they've got no control towards the A site, so the charge will continue. Five versus three. Paz taken down by Tarek, but he's got to be worry, worrying about a drop as well. Skadoodle around the connected position, picking on Santares. Automatic fighting on the site, but he can't get anything done. Santares down. Three versus two. Skadoodle taking some damage, but he's still alive. Tarek dancing around the smoke, but he can't commit through this. Surely Major spotting him, and that leaves Skadoodle alone. One versus three. So many smokes down. Trying to reposition. Does he go for it? Does he save? I think he has to save. The reset is is in the big gray button's been pressed and it's Cloud9's game save which has been lost. They said fears and Taurus and there that warning does not go without without uh, a lot behind it. I mean he's he's proven time and again that he's an absolute monster and to open up a round with just a fast double before his team's even actually ready to to pull the trigger on the push is just ridiculous. Now you gotta wonder where Cloud9 go from here. I mean, they, they are completely, like, just full reset. Skadoodle has the orb, but... I mean, how, I mean, we haven't really been able to see Skadoodle get to play his game so far. He's been absolutely denied. 
There you go. You, you killed someone. <laughs> There's the first one. The trade frag just absolutely destroyed. That second one was tight. Yeah, that's that is impressive, isn't it? Oh, mate, he's got the walls on. Ten to three. And the buy from Cloud9 sucks. The AWP saved from Skadoodle and some CZs. A cameo appearance from a UMP. I know CZs are dangerous. This is a winnable round for Cloud9, but considering how they've done on the buy rounds, it doesn't look quite likely. However, you can get these weird situations where the, uh, the T side approach things differently in ways that sometimes enable those CZs. Engine is uh, in T spawn once again. He's got a smoke lineup from there. You may see a screen pop up soon. I know he's deployed it already, so we'll see where that lands on the site. Ooh, it's going to cut off the drop zone position. It's going to isolate some of these CTs. Street creates a smoke to play around, and Skadoodle, he, they can run this distraction from him. They're lining up for him. They've got to spread up. They need to make their way onto the site, because otherwise these CZs will get activated. Skadoodle with a grenade kill. Rush moving in close, but there's so many targets. Calyx taken down. There's the bomb as well. Two versus three now, and Skadoodle is gone after two kills. So I have a pretty good chance here for Cloud9, the bomb down on the ground, but plenty of time. Oh, Tarek's picked up an orb now. Things get really dangerous. Spots ahead. Easy frag for Tarek. Now Engine, one versus two. I think his position is currently unknown. Able to get some engagement, but the trade frag is there. The flank, the crossfire, whatever way you, whichever way you want to describe it. It is a round for Cloud9. Four on the board, but only four and a chance at best to have five. That's not a good circumstance, but at least five would be workable into that second half. The smoke in the Molotov from Stewie was uh, really cool, especially with Skududo by the um, by the statue position of the AWP because it suddenly creates so many angles. You never know when someone's gonna emerge from one of those smokes and that's just perfect for CZ and the smoke criminal himself. A fourth round on the board for Cloud9. Can they get a fifth? They're in a good situation, weapons-wise, but it's a fast play from Space Soldiers. We haven't really seen this towards the beam from the side so far. And they're charging, they're looking to take map control. Rush with some nice angles, doing some damage, but no kills. Kadoodle has targets all over the place, and he will fall and be barbecued afterwards. He is in a mangal. Five versus three, automatic flanking once again, but maybe this task is insurmountable. Yeah, this really looks very sketchy at the moment for Cloud9. All the utilities still there, and there's an incendiary on Major four flashbangs still to play with as well as really nice positions a boost in fact calyx elevated there for the double peak the perfect double peak this is just it's, it's ridiculous how do you defeat this they're gonna push into this get absolutely mangled up by this setup look at that paz and calyx easy kills for them now automatic gets absolutely denied by calyx as well beautiful round from space soldiers and if you consider that perhaps the least success that they had was on the B-bomb site. I love how they just kept forcing the issue. They were confident that they could just, they could win their rounds there. And they were able to. 11-2-4. What a score for the end of that first half. I've been told by the internet, the internet has told me that Cobblestone was Space Soldiers' best map for over two years before Major joined Space Soldiers. Somehow they decided to ban it every single time. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's, that's next level. Like, this is our best map. We're just going to veto it. And then one day, leave it open. 11 to 4. That's wow. a big start for Space Soldiers and a nasty surprise. It's funny that you mentioned the, the cobblestone, um, the, or someone who tweeted you about the cobblestone, because the funny thing for me is, you know, th that's the thing. Like, I have not seen, since Space Soldiers started to get really good with Major, I have not seen them play really cobblestone because they've been banning it. But Cloud9, obviously, we've seen them use it as a fairly reliable uh, map pick time and again. And, and for me, actually, it's Cloud9 CT side that's, that I think is usually very impressive. And because if you can have pretty consistently good CT sites. It looks like he's wearing a spacesuit, by the way. Yeah. That is very ill-fitting, it seems. That's the, maybe that's the point. <laughs> yeah, perhaps he's supposed to look like he's in space. I actually think their gear is pretty cool. Their apparel. I like the colors. The black and yellow. They're like bees, that. It means, it means danger. They're like bees. It's like a hazard, hazard sign. More animals. From bees to chickens. Hopefully, they oh are God, not... Oh, God, what's happened there? They're like, like disease-carrying chickens. Oh, man, it's like... I watched the thing with Henry and Anders the other night, and it just reminded me of that. Very good movie. When you fly, when you fly to the US, you have to sign a form that says you have not been handling livestock. So keep me away from those chickens. Four space soldiers players will be around the B bomb site. Engine staying outside the drop zone. It was an angle to be held by CTs. Oh, he's got a dirty one. He's got the CZ as well. I know Yanka will be happy with that. It's a good weapon for that position. 
We'll see if it comes into play later on. It seems that it will do. Went one kill for him. Almost a second one, but not quite. Has he done enough damage? Doesn't seem so. An open A bomb site. They've got a really good spot here. Now look at Automatic. He's got a beautiful position to play with. Gets that first frag with ease. Second as well. And the third. So Cloud9 off to a explosive start in the pistol. Absolutely what they needed. That will alleviate quite some pressure, but obviously we know the story is far from over. The force buy is the next and perhaps most stressful part of winning a pistol round. The game on. Force buy. Game on. I think the CZ in that position deserves more than one kill, but it is an awkward angle. CZ or a 5-7, always good to have on the in or around the drop on a pistol round. Because if people are coming there, if one person's going there, there's probably three people going there. So you want a weapon with a lot of bullets. Five seven has, I think, 20 in a magazine, and the CZ obviously is basically an SMG. So all good in the hood. Even better if you can uh, drop one for somebody so they can buy armor, raise their defenses slightly more, like it's a game of Final Fantasy. Honestly, the prospect of Xantaris having a deagle is very scary to me. So it seems like he did get tagged by Skadoodle Scout immediately as he took the peak from Plateau, I imagine. So so uh, that's uh, that will make him less of a problem for now. And I like this from Cloud9. Again, they're, they're really, they've been really good, good in their anti-eco rounds, anti-force by rounds. You can see they're gathering information here so that they can be better. Like They can have more options. They can be more sure that they, they're not running into a stack. But Playing a slow round also does give some opportunities to the CTs. We can see that that is in, you know, happening in practice right now because they're getting time to rotate towards A, which they are starting to do. Three players there now, soon to be four as Engine rejoins them. This will not be an easy situation for Cloud9. Four players. Can they communicate all these positions at the same time? Calix playing up close. We'll get traded, but the trades continue for both sides. The long range will prevail for Cloud9, and Major will be the last man standing. But as Cloud9 move to the site, if he doesn't give his uh, position away via an audio cue, maybe there's a weapon to collect. Charging up, and surely he's been heard by now. No, because Automatic is basically planting for him. Exposed, no cover. But Stewie will pop out from nowhere. Mr. Yip will finish off the job. Yeah, I thought, I thought there was um, definitely some potential for Mage to just play some exits, maybe get a 1v1, get a kill, steal a gun, that kind of situation. But he went for the, he went for the, he went for the round win, I look like James, just going yeah. straight in there. Finely tuned hair. His hair is a wave. It is, it is a wave. But is his wave enough to six space soldiers down? Oh, I see what he did there. Well. Is Stewie the tsunami that Cloud9 need? I mean, if, if their suits can deal with space, I'm sure that a bit of water will be no problem. We'll see now that Stewie is going to be putting on more pressure with the Mag-10. Uh, he's going to be enjoying, enjoying time. I mean, who doesn't love running around Mag-10? Even if you die, you don't care because you're the Mag-10. Although they should care because now they've given away an AK to Paz. And this is something that they can absolutely just try and save. Now they could just say, hang on. We've got a spot now or we don't even need to do anything else. We can just hold on to the AK, maybe try to sacrifice the MAC-10 and, and Major with the USP to make a play, get some additional damage, but just hold the prioritize holding on to the AK. And that's a really nice way to come out of this round with a win. The thing is, the bomb has only just gone down and that might edge them on, egg them on, whichever you prefer, to uh, trying to go for this round. MAC-10, very dangerous, but they're not going to uh, overcommit. You can see Engine just dancing around the window and he's got some information. So now the save is more likely, especially as three smoke grenades have been deployed. do anything crazy. But uh, they have a good containment of Cloud9 at this point. Cloud9 are all full health, so they can actually just save in the bomb site. They don't need to run anywhere. You can see where Rush and uh, Skadoodle are, and Automatic will join them. I would if you, were from, the, right if you were from the streets of London, you would say they were coaching. I don't know what that means. They were coaching in the corner. I, I, I guess I'm not from the, the streets of London. No, Dan, you don't, you don't, you don't appear exactly. to be. You don't appear to be. Yeah. Well, maybe from the libraries of London. <laughs> 7 to 11 now, as Cloud9 are really fighting their way back. Quick orp onto Skadoodle. He's going to be enjoying that one. I think he f must have felt denied that he could even play his game in the first half. But we have Paz on the AWP here for Space Soldiers. and. A full set of utility almost. So this is going to be a really interesting round as both teams are going to be buying deep into their into the coffers, into their respective reserves of money.
and Cloud9 looking like they're going to run a default here. They have no presence towards drop and plateau, but there is automatic there to make them to create the threat levels to uh, suggest that maybe it could be a B play. The rest of the team will clear space towards the A site, push the CTs back, but there's three there. Paz is alone on the B plateau, and that's what allows them to cheat additional players to A. Yeah, we see this time and time again. Paz just sitting on his bum, looking down the plateau. Little challenge there. Automatic may offer something later because he's about to drop, but while nothing is going on, they can leave three deep in A site. And uh, Paz has enough range to buy some time for his team. He's got multiple places to re-peak, so even if Cloud9 emerge, it's not that easy. And uh, as everything goes quiet, we'll keep an eye on the Space Soldier's rotation because Cloud9 are making their way towards the B-bomb site. Now they need to make sure they flash this angle. Oh, they don't do it, and that's something they're going to pay for. And they pay heavily. The tax man has in play on Plateau will eventually be circumvented by the AK of Tarek as Kalex sits in the chicken uh, coop at the moment, but there's only 30 seconds to go for it. They look for it. Tarek with perfect timing. Now they have to try to predict the flank from engine. Tarek around the plateau, jumping around, but he's got to go for the plant. He can't be on plateau, that's where he wants to be. He's in the smoke. Engine, if he plays it slow, easy frag. Where's the second man? Spots him, gets the ding, but it's so fast from Rush with the Galil of all guns to get the kill. I think he just smashed the table after that. Things were falling off. Needs to be collected. And this is what I'm talking about. As soon as Paz starts engaging, you see the rotation from the CTs. And if it's not for automatic in the drop zone, there would be three CTs around the site while they get close to the crack in the wall. So that's, that's a continuous problem that we've seen on Cobblestone uh, this week and last week that T sides have to deal with. They have to be, um, if they're going to make a play towards A, they need to be better at denying the information towards the B bomb site. But it was so close for Space Soldiers getting that and they're really feeling the frustration. There is a timeout from Cloud9 at the moment and that's maybe exactly what Space Soldiers need just to take a moment to chill out. Yes, it was frustrating. He didn't win that round, but uh, it's a new day. It's an eco round, but it'll be back. Well... Lots of work to be done indeed, and we're starting to have a game on our hands, a real game, because I think there's a lot of fears from a lot of people that Cloud9 were really being locked out of this one, but with the pistol victory and, the, and uh, obviously the successive rounds that have gone their way, things are starting to really tighten up here, and I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what adjustments we may find from the likes of Space Soldiers to try to deal with what is uh, right now a pretty menacing Cloud9 on this T side. And again, this is why, you know, Cobblestone can be such a great map for them, you know, typically, I mean, as you would you expect, good T sides. A lot of teams can't really replicate it on the, the CT side. That's something that usually Cloud9 can do. But now they rely on their T side, which is uh, very strong as well. Major in a position that would be commonly checked. There it is. But still, the bait setups are strong. Xantaris with a double down to 5 HP. But that is a lot of damage done and guns that can be collected for Space Soldiers. And that's going to speed Cloud9 up into the B side. Kalix on his own, he's got the CZ going through the smoke, there's a flashbang now, I think from the CTs, and that's buying more time for the rotation. Now Zantar is coming in, now Engine's coming in, Paz and Major making their way as well, and Stewie's gone down, it's a two versus four, and now all four are around the site, boost on the tree position, but Skududu will punish them dearly for that one, automatic holding an angle, and now there's a flank coming in, everything going wrong for Cloud9, but when they make the right play, the Molotov flying through Skududu, one versus three, he needs to use the statue to avoid getting traded, Picking up the AK-47, using the shot from the AWP to draw them out. That's a great play from Skadoodle. One versus three now. Still time to do this. 30 seconds. Does he commit to the plant? No. Going around a tree position, looking the wrong way though. And there they are. Oh, he was so close, Skadoodle. Played it as well as he could, but it was just too much, too many man. Yeah, you have to respect Space Soldiers setting up that, that uh, sort of two-man setup there so they can guarantee a trade. Obviously, it looks a bit stretched for Engine, who has to really just go for a 180 and figure out where Skadoodle is. And he was very low HP, but wow. Gadoodle, excellent, excellent effort, but unfortunately, oh my God, look how Three close HP. it was. Yeah, that's so close. That was, that was honestly, he lost the round, but that was great from Skadoodle, especially when he fires the AWP after picking up the AK, because you hear an AWP shot, right? The guy can't shoot, so you face him, but he's got an AK. Yeah, that was gorgeous. And you rarely get to see an opportunity for plays like that too. So amazing presence of mind. 
from the man Skadoodle. And now it's down to Cloud9 to start pounding into that B-bomb side. That's a good hold right at the end of the plateau. This is very, very crucial. Major it could basically thwart the entire push. Himself comes out for a repeat. How much damage has he done? He delayed them. It's a big rotation. Santaris able to defend the stairs for at least one kill. This is very weathered here for Cloud9, but they're making things work. Two versus two now. Still chances, opportunities, but they must pick up the bomb. But there's plenty of time to do that. Crazy pushes through the smoke from the CT side. Massive gambles being taken, and it puts them in a two versus two. Paz has an AWP. He's holding an angle at the moment, looking for a cross, and neither player has done so at the moment. They're on the wrong side of the bomb site. The bomb is staring at them. It's begging for help. It's crawling on the floor. Needs bandages. Kalix is there as well. Where is Kalix coming from? They don't know, but they know where Paz is. Kalix is there to trade. The double pick's coming out, but... There it is, Kalix with the headshot. Massive round from Space Soldiers. Could have, turned, could have turned out easier for them as well. If you saw the play on the on the plateau, the, the CT was flashed, but then he was saved by the second flash that came in to slow down the T. So much carnage. And that, that could just make win the match. That was such an incredibly important round. Space Soldiers had no money, Cloud9 had no money, and Space Soldiers were the one that won it. And Cloud9, what we're looking at right now is $2,000 on average, basically, more or less. That is, that's, and, this is insane. It's a problem with flashbangs as well. If they're far away, it will only flash people for a split second and maybe not even really take away uh, vision at all for a significant period of time. A good example is Mirage when you're in CPR and people are flashing um, towards top mid. Often doesn't do enough. Tactical timeout has come and gone and uh, we will soon be back into the game. But Cloud9 are running out of opportunities they're hanging on the edge of the cliff, and space soldiers have their foot raised on the fingers. All they have to do is win a couple rounds where they'll have a pretty heavy advantage. And there's actually a pretty big pressure on trying to find a bomb plant here because Cloud9 are really lacking that money, and, and that's a big priority here. Paz, though, going straight up, there's no utility to stop any peaks, although. We'll miss the first shot, but again, there's a lot of utility here. We'll actually miss a... I think... Yeah, he's missed the second shot here, but he has support, so it's fine. Spray down comes in. Damn. Major with a nice... Very nice ace. Very fast ace from him on the spray. And that'll be... That'll be fun for Mr. Major. As now we go into round 23, and Space Soldier's now two rounds away from defeating Cloud9 on Cobblestone. If your pickums weren't dead before... <laughs> then they are about, to, well, maybe about to get smoked by a kipper, maybe. Smoked like a kipper, not by a kipper. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, back in the room. Cloud9 of five AKs is a very dangerous Cloud9 indeed. And you could say Space Soldiers are feeling the pinch at the moment with Kalex of the UMP, a fast play from Cloud9. Lots of flashbangs, this time nobody on the plateau. Zantares and Major pushing for the smoke again. Three runs in blind, Major goes down. Zantares doing what he can. He will not step back, but he, and he will get traded. More CTs charging for the smoke. He, he's like, oh, wait, long range UMP, not the one for Kalex. And it's Engine and Paz, they continue to charge. There is no stop on these players and they'll pay for it so many players streaming through the smokes there space soldiers don't want cloud nine getting into post plant positions but it's such a risk and it wipes out all the money as well no it's insane if you if you consider that a cloud line just did a just a straight rush on b and they're in a position where they could just lose the match that is that shows a lot of confidence and a, a lot of just experience too understanding that uh, th i mean they may feel like that's even though it's a very risky play, they must have felt like it's the best play, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it. So I love that that didn't deter them. The fact that they are down so many rounds that it could all be over very soon. They understand that Counter-Strike is played a round at a time. And that's how they are taking this at the moment. And we see Skadoodle once again back on the AWP again. It's been very hard for him to get going in this match so far. And sometimes that's how it goes as an AWPA. But Space Soldiers, they have a lot of stuff to work with here. Yeah, the money was wiped out in the previous round, but now it's wiped out from the coffers entirely. If they lose this, then it's comeback trail for Cloud9. Automatic once again lurking. This time there's nobody to challenge him on the plateau. I don't know what information he can glean from that. You see there's a boost 
in around a drop and automatics moving away but surely Kalex won't peak this soon so the space soldiers have a boost but they don't have the information meanwhile the push is coming in from space soldiers ending with a 2k that is huge he gives his teammates a chance but they've lost the sight Kalex is rotating automatic must have heard him there's going to be a duel on the stairs and Kalex will lose it that leaves it a 2 on 2 on the site and it will soon be a 2 on 3 as automatic moves up the ramp now they have to be very cautious they've got questions to ask here I was about to say that there's a really big argument to just save both guns considering again as you highlighted what's going to happen to their economy with a round loss here so at the very least mage is going to look to save the orb and it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do because they have some rounds to play play with and obviously it might be unlikely to be able to keep the orb alive into the second round so do they try to buy around it do they want to go for just like straight eco there's there's a few choices to be made here by space soldiers moving forwards and cloud nine they're really in a great position to recover into a tied game. Really curious to see what the desks think of the... Uh, I don't even know if you could call them retakes from, from Space Soldiers on the B-Bomb site because you are at a, such a disadvantage pushing through a smoke. Maybe there's a flash timing from the CTs as well. In that last post, Dewey was blind uh, when he got taken down, but risk versus reward. What would you do? Four-round lead remains for Space Soldiers as a loss bonus starts to rise, but uh, Cloud9 are surely getting too close for comfort for the Space Soldiers. When their buy comes on, can they keep their metal and take it over the line? For now, we've got Major on the AWP. I'm sure you'll look to uh, get something done early, but it's Cobblestone. Maybe the worst map with which to do that. Yeah, and I do, I do I like how they just did decide to go for that fleek. I think that's, that's a nice one. Maybe they'll run into Major. You never know. I mean, we can see that right now that's not necessarily the case. He is alone towards A, so going to be just straight USPs and a CZ against a, a massive onslaught here from Cloud9. They're taking their sweet time about it, though, using Molotovs to make things as safe as possible. The drop zone obviously being one of the more annoying positions. Nice pot flash there to try to clear any players directly below. So show, slowly but surely, Cloud9 with that utility working their way forwards. Kalex on the boost will be removed from the boost. No dilly-dallying around the statues, no vandalism, whilst Cloud9 are around. Rush flanking already, looking to take the AWP away. Major misses his shot, and that's the last shot of the round for him. AWP won't get collected, but the utility will. Skadoodle already has a sniper. They won't go for the opportunist to AWP. So, Space Soldiers back on the bye. No AWP, and that's important for them this round. We saw what the AWP could gift you on the CT side if you can get into position towards the plateau. So that may make a difference in the information or general game of Space Soldiers in this round. Let's see what Cloud9 can do to break them once again. They've got everything they want, starting with Stewie throwing some grenades towards A. Forcing Engine away from his peak with a nice flashbang. And it might be a far time for Cloud9 once again. And the thing too is that Cloud9 have money in the bank to play with should they, you know, have, should a mistake be made. So it's going to be just firearms that Space Soldiers will have to win, of course. Now, what's some harassment from the Cloud9 side here, using lots of utility to clear out space and generate threats towards this B-bomb site. Tarek now, the player who is mo the most far forward, is going down the stairs. Will he check this off angle? Could be a double. Oh, Major looking away from the flashbangs. Out comes Santaris, but the fast trade from Rush is going to make the difference. Cloud9 have the site. Right now, this looks impossible to retake, but Skadoodle is going to burn in Stewie's Molotov. Two versus three, but still, it honestly is not favorable in the slightest here for the Space Soldiers. They are not willing to play a post-plant post -plant situation versus Cloud9. I mean, Ma Major was kind of lost to the cause in that situation against Antares, trying to play off his teammate dying through the smoke, but it, they just, it's not working out. It's the third round now where they're just forcing their way through the smoke grenades on the B-bomb site and having limited success. Two weapons likely to be saved by Space Soldiers in this round. And uh, following the next one, which presumably will be an eco, they'll be at max loss bonus, but Cloud9 are heading to a 13-14 scoreline. Space Soldiers running out of steam. 
It does get slightly more dangerous for Cloud9 here, though, in this situation, because, again, as you say, they've got two guns saved. They've got the max loss bonus, so they can get a couple of CZs and uh, Kevlar's with those CZs, potentially, on, on a couple of the players. So th there is definitely a world where Space Soldiers do a lot of damage here. We've already seen what they can do with CZs. So Cloud9 need to, of course, you know, maintain that discipline, maintain that composure, and keep the focus up so that they don't get caught off guard here, because it's when you think you're safe, what is when you're not in a game like Counter-Strike? For me, Space Soldiers need the AWP. They need the AWP on plat. Otherwise, I think they're going to have a considerably more difficult time trying to get those, uh, those much-needed last rounds on the board. They've only won three rounds in this half so far, although in total they've only been seven rounds won by, uh, by CT sides in this match. That is a really bad smoke. But ultimately, it won't uh, mean so much. It looks pretty cool, though. It does look cool, yeah. Okay. It does look cool. You guys remember that next time I throw a bad smoke on overpass. 14 to 12, two rifles, one of which is hiding around the statue position. Ooh. And Tarek says, absolutely no. Yeah, that is not a good start for Space Soldiers. Down to the three CZs. Can't really get much done here. Oh my god, Automatic is just wrecking everybody. And it's finished off by Tarek. 14 rounds for Space Soldiers. We've been there for a while, but 13 now for Cloud9. They have mounted quite the comeback with five rounds back to back to back. You will note the lack of smoke grenades on the site this time. They know they're up against pistols for the most part, and uh, the smoke grenades may be more helpful to Space Soldiers to cause anarchy that we saw Cloud9 uh, play on for one round in the first half. So Cloud9 staying focused at the moment, but this is the all-important round for the North American team. This is the round they need to win. Paz is indeed on the AWP once again, starting towards the A side. And uh, Cloud9 will start towards B with their own sniper rifle. And again, you can you sometimes see snipers flash back and forth over this wall to force the opponent away from the uh, superior angle. But now will be smoked, so Cloud9 will be contained for a while, and Tarek gets lost early. Yeah, good start from Space Soldiers. Cloud9 have lots of time to mount a recovery, though. Automatic begins to pressure towards the drop, and Cloud9 may actually, with the man down situation, decide to just go in to the B-bomb site. But with the positioning of Space Soldiers on the plateau, as it is with Major, he's probably good for at least one there, which would make things really tough, as that buy a lot of time for rotation for Space Soldiers. So he has to get at least one here. Major. What can he do? Be looking for it. Oh, it might be two. Just the one, though. And the information as well. The bomb is spotted. That big peak onto Plateau did not go well. Big chance for Cloud9. The CT need to get onto the site through the door, through the choke points, and they manage to do that close by the tree. The smoke goes down, and that allows them to get closer to the site. That makes it even worse for Space Soldiers. Oh, sorry, for but Skadoodle is there. The bomb is down now, 30 seconds, and Skadoodle has it all to do once again in a clutch position, trying to spray. Maybe he knows Calix was tagged, but Paz has the angle, and there's match point for Space Soldiers. And I have to say, I think that Zantaros was essentially a bait. He's standing on the top of Plateau, but not showing to the T's and, and their position and he's just spraying towards the drop zone. But you can figure out his position roughly from Cloud9, and I think that might run distraction while the first kill comes in from his teammate who is closer with the off angle. Absolutely. I think, I think you're absolutely right. Lots of... Lots of, I mean, that's that's the level that they're definitely thinking of. We've seen it before. I mean, we see you know, from Skadoodle as well, you know, the, the level of mind games at this level, you know, with the shooting the orb, picking up the AK, and so on and so forth to, to act as a bait. It's... Uh, Everything these pro players do, I mean, they play this game just, that's, that's all consuming. It's all that their lives are, is. And so you have to assume that when they do stuff like that, that it is definitely for a purpose. And right now, it's working out for Space Soldiers. One round of weight from taking this game against Cloud9. And they have the AWP onto Paz. And, and as you noted before, like it's, it's been so impactful for them. Every time Paz comes on the rotation into a B push, he's been pretty good at at least getting a frag or two. You can see the dejected looks there of Mr. Stewie not having a good time so far, deep in contemplation. Even even if it wasn't an intentional bait, it ended up being an effective one. I'm surprised that there weren't two kills in that situation. So there was a tactical timeout from Cloud9, and now there is a general pause, which is possibly a technical one for Space Soldiers. So we see admins on the stage. We'll see what's going on over there. What a time, though, to, to break the tension of the match. 
It's been pretty crazy so far. Major leading the charge on the CT side with 23 kills, but Tarek won better with 24, but it's not enough so far as it's Cloud9 against the match point of Space Soldiers. So it's, it's an impressive performance, isn't it? And uh, it's, it's awesome to see, like to be you know so present as we are, because we, we have a great position in our little booth uh, to, to you know, watch the players, see their reactions, hear how loud they get, see the coaches in action, you know, barking orders and the, the, the amount of tension released when Space Soldiers at least guaranteed the overtime was was pretty massive. And also the shot of Stewie there, we can see that on the server, he's not having the best of games. You know, you expect that Stewie will have generally like good frag, like every time he plays that he's gonna be fragging really well, but he's not had the best game from a fragging perspective so far. And he has often been the first man in as well. So uh, much like Skadool, he's probably found that there's lots of spots where he can't get his game going. And that is frustrating. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Cloud9 have some executes on maps, which include getting their own team flashed in the process, like on the uh, Inferno towards the pit, for example. Um, and we saw we saw some big executes towards the B bomb site. And again, Space Soldiers were, were brazen enough to charge through those smokes. And sometimes uh, Stewie had to take one for the team, but in all those rounds, I think they were successful. So he's definitely uh, been towing the line despite the frag. He has been the human shield in some rounds. Just waiting for a, uh, a software restart around the back before we get into this game. Well, it appears we are going to take a very quick break whilst the technical issue is resolved. So stay tuned to find out the conclusion of Space Soldiers and Cloud9. Oh, apparently we're back. Hello. Well, 
Hello again. Um, Hello. We are back, and I think the players are still waiting for the uh, the tech issue to be resolved. Hopefully, they can keep their focus because that's always important, especially with these pauses, especially such a time of tension as well. Yeah. How do you keep your head in the game? Well, it's one of those things, isn't it, where it's part of it. It's part of it. It's an inescapable reality of technology. You know, sometimes it's going to go wrong and there's a lot of technology at play, especially when you're playing a video game, as opposed to you know playing a racket sport, for example, where your, your racket breaks, you pick up another one, right? So, so uh, I, I suppose one of the differences is like weather conditions, maybe. Maybe it's, I shouldn't, you know, not even bother making a comparison. But obviously, there's lots of moving parts. So that's another thing where you know you expect Cloud9 to be a team that sort of has a bit of an edge. They're super used to dealing with stuff like this. They've been there hundreds of times before, so it should be easier for them to maintain their focus and game plan it throughout sucks, this. Man. I don't think it's it ever does easy. Suck. It's in never this easy, no, but I almost pulled my headset off, spinning my chair. Sorry about that. But at least for Space Soldiers, you know, they are, you know, for their sake, despite being lesser experienced, they do have the, the, the leads. They have uh, I was about to say they have banks to play with, but the funny thing is that if they actually lose the uh, this this round to Cloud9, who have a decent decent enough bank for the rest of this match, then they don't have anything in the following round. So this round is all kind of on this round, actually, now that I think about it, as far as, far as Space Soldiers are concerned. We've watched a lot of Space Soldiers in in the past year, and I'm so I'm so glad that they've uh, they've made it to this point. But how far can they go? That is a big question. It's a, it's a question for a number of teams. Liquid is another example of a team where they're we asking themselves how how far can we go from this point? QB Fire as well. Maybe even Vega Squadron. Lots of stories to be told as this tournament progresses. I love I love these uh, these teams that are getting these breakout performances and these the opportunity to play the opportunity to gather the experience on a stage like this against some of the world's best and just that because we, when we watch them play again you know as I mentioned I referred to us being so close to them in the studio it's so cool to see how much it means to players like this because it, it is so new to them and that is very inspiring I think. While we. Uh I mean, this task might be insurmountable for Cloud9, but while we wait for the match to resume, we will uh, look at some obstacles they could mount. See you back here soon. What's up, Cloud9? You guys ready to go kill the course in Ninja Quest? Ready. Oh, yeah. All right. We're here to play at the Ninja Optical course to see if we can do the fastest. <laughs> oh. Team building is very important in and outside the game, especially if you're going to compete at the highest levels. We're going to set up a nice little course for you guys today. You can't like slow down or you're going to fall. We don't usually do stuff like this. <laughs> That's really hard. Yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> this is going to be on TV. I'm hoping to see Tarek embarrass himself. Ankle breaker right here. Ankle breaker. I think I'm pretty screwed, but I'm going to do my best. I want you guys to go out and try all the obstacles, have some fun, and then after that, we're going to see who can be the fastest. I think Tyler's probably the most physically fit just because he's from Iowa. Some Iowa genes, we got the farmer strength, it's a real thing. I may look, you know, kind of tiny, but, you know, I'm massive. Tyler will probably embarrass himself the most. He's looking really overconfident. I'm wearing everything that I can to improve my ability to run through this course, and obviously Superman is very fast and he can technically fly. So that's uh, what I'll be doing today. You'll be flying today? I will be flying through this course today, no problem. You guys ready to run the course? Yeah. Awesome, let's use the fastest. Let's do it. I'm kind of scared, bro. I'm not going to lie. I was going through pretty fast. And then I felt the spider wall. That was unexpected. I thought I was an expert at that. <laughs> Uh, personally, the hardest obstacle was probably the spider wall. I think my shoes were kind of like slick on the walls. Damn! You got technique. <laughs> on the wall, I was acting like I couldn't do it. I easily got up the wall. When it came to going up the wall, I was really close to giving up, but everyone sort of pushed me on in the end. You can do it! I'm happy I did end up getting to the top and pressing the button. I was going on with my shoes, but I fell and my shoe like flew up and I just watched it fly in my face. And after that, I pretty much just gave up. No one expected me, I guess, to do all I did in the course. I ended up winning the time of 34. I was shocked that Will won. I thought he had no chance. I thought Tyler was going to beat him by a mile. 
I'm happy for my teammate, Will, who uh, beat me on the course today. It's just all fun and games. Welcome back. We will hopefully soon be into the game. All the bits and bobs are almost working again. So if you are just joining us, Cloud9 are against match point. Space Soldiers finally taking it there after a few rounds of failure and freeze time has been cancelled. It looks like we're good to go. Nice. Obviously, very, very tense stuff. It took ages for Space Soldiers to finally get round number 15, as James mentioned. And it, obviously, for them, it's, it's such a big deal. We saw the screen, well, we heard the screams. We felt the energy from over there. They're pretty close to us at the moment. And all they need is one more. But if they lose this round, their economy's not in a position which will support them into a full buy in the following round. So Cloud9, if they win this, they have a very good chance at getting the overtime. And with a quick pick attempt from Paz not going right, no advantages to be had early round just yet for either side. And Cloud9 will begin to run a default pressure towards B through the use of automatic and they will, in the meanwhile, take a long with the force of utility and multiple players. Paz starting towards A. See if he switches later on, but maybe he won't get an opportunity because uh, Cloud9 are pretty deep towards this site. Bomb's being collected by Skadoodle, though, who is starting to rotate towards the B-bomb site. Major keeping an eye on the plateau position. There were smokes down there by the CT side. Now engine, he's close enough to this area to hear a lack of sound if uh, noise is cut by Cloud9. Maybe just looking towards Plateau. Skadoodle's posted up there now. So it's really interesting to see what will happen in the uh, coming seconds. That's a great snap from Paz. Bomb going back towards the A site and the full rotation is here, but Major's almost already on the flank. This is big. This might force the hand of Cloud9 now as they have indeed dropped a player. Three there, though, for Space Soldiers to look to defeat this push. There is the peak. There's the flashback. Very important. Out comes Antares. Gets nothing. Down to Paz. Picks Rush out the air. Now another one from Paz. What else can he... Oh, my goodness. Paz. Four from him. Absolutely unbelievable there from him. Oh, my God. The ace to take the match. Oh, could you ask for an ace at a better moment? Paz stepping up. Unbelievable. What a ridiculous way to finish a very difficult CT side. 